In this video, I'm doing a position analysis from the McGreal Cup. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. My book, Backgammon Back Game Strategies, is now available. There's a link in the description to where you can purchase it. If you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. So this is the position um, from the McGreal Cup. Uh, Black is on roll and has a 5-3 three, three to play. This is an 11-point match. Black has three, white has one, so black is leading 3-1, or eight away, 10 away, and the cube is in the middle. Um, it's a 5-3 to play, so pause the video. I'll let you think about it, what you'd like to play. Think about how you would play this 5-3, and we'll look at the analysis in a moment. Okay, so looking at this, black is down by eight uh, by 16 pips before the roll, uh, before the play, and will be down eight pips afterwards. Black does have two back checkers, uh, while white has a lot of checkers up front to try to continue either attacking or creating more blocking points. So looking at the analysis, it turns out the best play is running the back checkers from 23 to 15 like this, resulting in this position. Tied with that is another play of advancing one of the back checkers with 23 to 20 and bringing one down 13 to 8, resulting in this position. On the other hand, the natural play of making the three-point with these two builders, which you do from the opening position, is actually an error, and that results in this. So let's look at why. This is the dice distribution equity heat map for the, the top play of running 2315 on the upper left and making the three point on the upper right. And the difference is here on the lower left. You see the key swing rolls are 6-2 and 5-2. Uh, the negative swing rolls include 3-2, uh, 4-3, four, four, and 6-3, the threes that hit. So we'll take a look at all of these. Then this is how they're played. So after the top play and after making the three point, the 6-2 is played exactly the same, but the resulting position is different. And we'll see that in the moment in a moment. Um, and we'll also take a look at the 5-2 as well as the threes. So this is what it looks like if black makes the top play of running with a with the 5-3, and now white rolls a 6-2. Six, 6-2 two. Six, two is best played like this, breaking the midpoint, bringing two checkers down, resulting in this position. Now Black has a shot to hit this with a one as well as a six four. So that's 12 numbers. Um, additionally, black only has one checker back. Uh, so it's a lot easier to um, escape the second back checker. Uh, on the other hand, after making the three point, if white rolls a six two, it's played exactly the same resulting in this. Now black has two back checkers. So Black can hit with a 6-4 and a 6-3, but that's only four numbers. And also, white has this same attacking structure to be able to build uh, or make more points here or possibly attack. And black, white is a bigger favorite when black has two back checkers here. Now, let's look at what happens with the same thing with the 5-2. Again, when you run the 5-2, it should be used to hit, like hit loose like this. Now there's only one back checker back. The other one is partially escaped and there's a direct ace shot. On the other hand, if you made the three point, the five two is played like this, similar to the six two. And now there's a lot of attacking options and there's two checkers back and there is not a direct shot. There's only six four and six three, which is four numbers. Now let's look at the threes. The threes, are where you could be hit. So remember after this, 
white can hit with threes. However, it's not correct to hit with all of the threes. And we'll see that. It's only correct to hit with 3-2, 4-3, and 6-3, but not correct to hit with 3-1, double three, and 5-3. So let's take a look at that. So 3-1, it's best to make the five point, and we'll look at that in a moment. With the 5-3, it's best to make the three point and not hit. Uh, and with double three, it's best to make the two interboard points and not hit. The only bad threes are 6-3, 3-2, and 4-3, where it is correct to hit. So you are leaving a blot in front of a stripped point, and that's always good uh, because if your opponent has to hit, uh, decides to hit, uh, the opponent would have to break that point. And this point is a key point that connects these back checkers with the rest of the army. Um, so it, white's position will be difficult to bring home um, if white were to break the midpoint. And now look at how 5-3 plays if you run. The correct play is to make the three point. Hitting is actually a blunder. So that's important to understand. Think about how these possible hitting numbers would play. So of course, white can hit with threes, but with five three, it's actually incorrect to hit. So it's actually safe here. Also with double three, the correct play is not to hit. It's almost a blunder. The correct play is to make two inner board points resulting in this position. So again, this blot is safe. So now you can use it to make the outer board points with a 4-2 or a 5-3 or safety it with a 6 or a 7 or 9 or something like that. And then the 3-1, again, you don't want to break this point. You can use the 3 to efficiently make the 5 point, which is the correct play uh, in response to running with a 5-3 with a 3-1 for, for white. Now, let's look at the original position. This was the original position. And we'll make some variants to see what are the key things. Uh, one of the key things is this nine point actually blocks this these two checkers on white's 18 point really well. Um, if these were not there, as in this position, moving one here and moving one here, now making the three point is correct because uh, it's easier for white to start coming out. And if white were to uh, run with a 5-4 or 5-3 or 5-2 or something like that, and leave a shot, now you have a three-point board. So that makes it more dangerous. Going back to the original position, if you modify white's front position by moving a checker back, now there's only um, 10 checkers in the zone. So um, actually making the three-point is actually pretty close. And 13-5 turns out to be tied with... Uh, advancing and bringing one down and running all the way is close. If you just move the checkers around, again, making the three point is, is still an error and the running is still best. Bringing one more back, again, does the same kind of thing. So uh, that doesn't affect it. So that indicates that the additional checkers here make it more important to run. And these checkers here help block these two points on these two checkers on white's 18 point. So the tips to learn from this position is try to leave blots in front of stripped points because if the opponent has to hit you or wants to hit you, the opponent will have to break that point. And if there are numbers that the opponent may use, like in this case, the three one, the five three, and the double three that can be used elsewhere better, uh, the blot turns out to be safe. So you need to look at how all of your possible uh, all of your uh, possible hitting numbers for your opponent play, like the 5, 3, double 3, and 3, 1, as I mentioned. You can learn this by studying the dice distribution, as I mentioned. There is a feature on XG. Uh, people ask me, uh, a common question is, what good is the dice distribution during the match if you're only able to use it after the match. The, the thing that's good about studying the dice distribution is that it trains you to start thinking about these things. So when you're actually playing the match and you don't have access to this, you start thinking about that in your mind and that will help you make the better plays in the future. The other thing you wanna do is compare variants. So when you're studying a position, 
look at the position, look at the, cor the correct play, and make some variance. Modify the position. Move some checkers from one place to another place. Make a small variant. This is how you do testing and a scientific testing. You make a small change to see what happens, and that will teach you the important features of the position that make the correct play right. So compare the variance like that, and you can do that subsequently. Again, comparing the variance will teach you the important aspects of the feature uh, of the, the important aspects and features of the position so that when you uh, get into a similar position later, you understand it better. So that was the position analysis from the McGreal Cup. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. Again, my book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can buy it. If you're interested in lessons, please email me. My email address is in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.